the brain the human brain has a hundred billion neurons each neuron is connected to 10,000 more other neurons sitting on your shoulders is the most complicated object in the known universe Michio Kaku in all honesty guys welcome to today's session this is on the cortex There are two main tissues that forms the brain, gray matter and white matter. Gray matter forms the surface of each cerebral hemisphere, AKA what we call the cortex. And then your white matter forms the bulk of the deeper parts of the brain. It actually consists of all those glial cells, the myelinated axons that connect the various gray matter areas. There are four main lobes that you need to know of, plus an additional one. The frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the temporal lobe, and finally, the occipital lobe. And additionally more, we can add a lobe known as the insula. Now, it is worth knowing before we continue that there's something called the sulci and the gyri. Okay? So the sulci is your grooves, those depression that form the external part of the brain. Sulcus for singular. Then you have your gyri, which are your ridges or your elevations. Gyrus for singular. Okay, there are two main hemispheres, each with their individual functions. Think about the left brain as what you use in school. So it forms part of your functions like the language, linear thinking, mathematics, facts, and logic. As opposed to your right brain, which is mostly dealing with your visual spatial, the capacity to know where you are in space, your imagination, your intuition, the creative arts. So that brain deals with the creative part of your brain. And it's connected by a structure called the corpus callosum, which is a large C-shaped nerve fiber bundle, which makes up actually the largest collection of your white matter tissue in the brain. Now, how do we divide the lobes? What brings forth the division of the lobes is actually by your sulci. So there are four main sulci that you need to know. Number one is the central sulcus, okay? This divides your frontal and your parietal lobe. Then there is the lateral sulcus, also known as your sylvian fissure, which divides your temporal, your frontal, and your parietal lobe. Moving on to what we call the parietal occipital sulcus, which divides your parietal and your occipital lobe and finally if you draw an imaginary line between the pre-occipital notch the pre-occipital notch is actually an indentation or a notch uh, it's about five centimeter in front of the occipital pole if you draw an imaginary line between the pre-occipital notch to your parietal occipital sulcus that we just mentioned it will delineate the occipital and the temporal lobe now, moving on to our frontal lobe. There are five main areas that you need to know that are part of the frontal lobe. Number one is the primary motor cortex. Number two is what you call the motor association cortex, which has those two areas highlighted there, the premotor cortex and the supplementary motor cortex. Number three, you have your frontal eye field. Number four, there is the prefrontal cortex. And finally, number five is the Broca's area. Now, what are the functions of this area? Because if you understand the divisions, you can understand the functions, okay? So number one, 
is the primary motor cortex we mentioned. This deals with the voluntary movement. End of story. Then number two, the motor association cortex, which has your two areas. Remember your premotor cortex and your supplementary motor cortex. So this deal with planning, sequencing, and actually executing your movements. Okay. Then we move on to the frontal eye field. The frontal eye field deals with voluntary eye movement. So your saccade to be able to look left, right, up, down. That's your frontal eye field. Then we have what we call the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex makes the majority part of what we know as the frontal lobe. So memory, learning, personality, behavior, decision making, judgment, motor planning and attention and so many others this is the place where it originates and finally there is the broca's area which mainly deals with speech production and always remember it's only in the dominant hemisphere typically on the left in left in 90 percent of right-sided people moving on to the temporal lobe the temporal lobe has mainly four areas that you need to know. The primary auditory cortex, the auditory association cortex, the vernicus area, which again, remember, it's mainly, okay, the vernicus area is actually mainly in the temporal, but it also has a small part that is in the parietal. That's why you call it temporal parietal region, okay? However, it's only in the dominant hemisphere, usually on the left hemisphere. And finally, deep-seated is what we call a primary or factory cortex. Now, the primary auditory cortex has to deal with awareness of sound, okay? So it helps you perform basic hearing processes. The ability to detect pitch, volume, the frequency and the location of where the sound is coming from. Then your auditory association cortex, it is involved in mainly processing that sound, analyzing it and recognizing it by comparing it to old memory so that you know, am I hearing voice? Am I hearing thunder? Am I hearing a can that is falling down? Okay, so always remember just something to remember about the, about the brain is that primary areas, for example, your primary auditory cortex, they deal with the core basic function of that function. For example, the primary auditory cortex deals with mainly awareness of hearing. But when there's a association area, for example, auditory association cortex, it deals mainly with the processing and analyzing of those core function of the primary area. Okay. And finally, second last, we have the vernicus area, which deals with language comprehension, interpretation, and recognition. Okay, very important part of understanding aphasia. And last but not least is the primary olfactory cortex, which has to do, as you guess, awareness of smell. Moving on, to the parietal lobe, okay? There are three main areas that you need to know about the parietal lobe. Just post, after the central sulcus, what you call post-central sulcus, there's the first area that you need to know, and it's known as the primary somatosensory cortex. Then the second area that you need to know is known as your somatosensory association cortex and finally you need to know an area that actually it's mainly in the parietal lobe but it also has it also dips actually into the occipital and the temporal lobe which is known as the posterior association area now what do these structures perform as you guessed it, the primary somatosensory cortex deals with awareness of somatic sensation. Now, what are the somatic sensation? I mean, think about fine touch, proprioception, vibration, 
pressure, pain, and things like temperature. Then the somatosensory association cortex, as you guessed it, it's obviously dealing with analysis, processing, and recognition of those somatic sensations by comparing it to what you knew before, all the memory. Okay, so imagine I'm holding uh, this bottle. It's a bottle of spice, right? It's in your hands. If you close your eyes and I put this object into your hand, you will be able to feel the shape, the texture of that object. And thus you'll be able to recognize that it's probably a spice bottle because you have felt it before, hence all the memory. But you'll also be able to tell if it's on the right or is it on the left hand without even seeing it. So that is the core basic function of the somatosensory association cortex. And finally, we have the posterior association area which is actually remember it dips also into your temporal lobe it dips also into your occipital lobe so it's actually a multimodal association area so it has collision or meetup of your visual your auditory and your somatosensory area so your visual from your occipital your somatosensory from your parietal and your auditory from your temporal Okay, so the function is mainly proprioception and spatial awareness, the capacity to tell where you are in space and all the objects that surround you. That, because you need all those to be able to deal with your proprioception. Last but not least, the occipital lobe. It has two main areas that you need to know. The primary visual cortex, the visual association cortex now the primary visual cortex as you would have imagined it deals with awareness of a visual stimuli then of course your visual association cortex deals with the analysis and recognition of those visual stimuli comparing it to old memory so that you can be able to identify is it red so the color is it blue is it orange is it green the shape, is it round, is it oval, is it square, or the size, is it big, is it small, is it medium, is it micro, is it macro, or X and other visual cues. And finally, we have what we call the insula, also known as the central lobe or the island of rail. It's actually a portion of the cortex folded very deep within the lateral sulcus on each hemisphere. Think about it. Ever got a terrible stomach ache? Maybe you ate something terrible, maybe poisonous. You went to a restaurant and then you got a terrible head, uh, stomach ache. That pain that you felt is coming what you, it's what we call visceral pain. Okay? Because viscera is your organs that do not have your voluntary receptors, such as your spleen, your liver, your gut, your appendix. Okay? It's not like your skin where you have an actual uh, obvious somatic receptor that you can feel. Okay? So that visceral pain that you feel is actually processed by the insula. But this tiny, tiny lobe also deals with other things. It helps you uh, delineate a capacity to tell the right from wrong, okay? Things like taste, self-awareness, emotion, and other things are actually processed in this area. Ladies and gentlemen, this marks the end of the summary of the cortex. I thank you.